Ladies and gentlemen, this is another addition to our filtration video series. This, ser this video, we will be talking about the hang on the back filters. I'm not going to be talking about a specific brand, a specific size or style, but just hang on the backs in general. The hang on the back filters are the most common, most popular begin beginner filtration system, as in they come with most all-in-one kits where you have the box that has the tank, the lot, the filter, everything. 99% of those will have hang on the back filters. Hang on the back filters are generally for the most part the most inexpensive to purchase at at your uh, fish stores. So that's another reason they're the most popular for beginners. Most pet stores will push the hang on the back filters as a sale because they get repeated sales from the hang on the back filters as opposed to say a sponge filter here which once you buy it there's really no need to buy more things for it. So how does the hang on the back filter work? Okay so down in the tank here let's see if more light will help. Alright so down in the tank here you have this strainer. So water gets sucked into the strainer and up up this uplift tube here. The uplift tube goes up to your filter here. So I'm going to take the cover off of it and show you what we have inside. I've modified this one a little bit to get a little more filtration, but the water gets pulled up the uplift tube and down into the compartment. And it gets pulled by some sort of motor with an impeller. The impeller and motor could be placed anywhere on the filter, really. It could be on the strainer, it could be somewhere in the uplift tube, it could be in the back. Almost all of them are in the back at the bottom of the uplift tube. You can see I put these pot scrubbers in the back back here as an extra bacteria bed. But your water comes in the back, gets pulled by your uplift tube, goes through, fills your back compartment back here, and goes through the factory cartridge that they give you. And it will have some sort of floss, more than likely, and a compartment that has activated carbon in it. This is what the manufacturers and the pet stores love about hang on the back filters because they say every two weeks or month or whatever you need to throw this away and come to the store and buy another one. We'll leave that at that right now but really this isn't needed if you have some other bacteria bed source. Most hang on the back filters, besides the cartridge, will provide some other surface area to grow your bacteria. It may be a bio wheel like this one. It could be a plastic tray with slits in it. One manufacturer I've seen actually put a serrated surface on the overflow here on the downspout to collect the bacteria. I've seen cartridges in the back that are full of holes and stuff to get a bacteria to grow. Some of the hang on the backs will have spray bars or plastic cartridges in the back to put your own media in and stuff. 
but it's basically the same. You have a strainer, uplift tube, or intake tube, depending on what you want to call it, a motor with an impeller, a compartment in the back, a cartridge, and a return, and some sort of biological bacteria bed. All right, so the benefits of it is one, it doesn't take up a whole lot of tank, a lot of space in your tank, just the strainer and the intake tube or uplift tube. Two, the other benefit is usually they're inexpensive to, to purchase and they're easy to find. The downsides to them they aren't the most energy efficient. As you can see on this, I was able to put all these extra pot scrubbers down there, and there's still room for more. It's, in my opinion, a waste of space, so that's why I'm filling it up with more media. The cartridge is a selling point to keep making this store and the manufacture money, which there's other ways to do it where you don't have to do that. There's a whole lot of moving parts on these. I've had impellers lock up and break, I've had motors lock up, I've had bio wheels break. Um, they can get algae in here and slows down their spin and their efficiency at that point. Different brands are very different. The strainer kind of works as a mechanical filter. As you can see here, stuff gets stuck to the strainer and when I do my tank maintenance, I clean it off. The chemical filtration is the carbon that's inside of here, biological filtration here, and on the floss, mechanical filtration also in that whatever gets sucked up into here, if it can't pass through the floss, gets stopped in, in the filter. So you have biological, chemical, and mechanical filtration here. But there's a lot of suction on the strainer and intake tube there. So fry, you get sucked up it. Small fish, uh, shrimps, weaker fish, that type of stuff can get stuck to it or sucked into it. The way that these work, if you have a power outage or your water level gets too low, or something happens that the suction of your tube stops, whether it's sucking air because your water got too low, or the power goes off and it's not pulling water, most of them have an issue with starting back on their own and you have to actually prime the pump. You have to take, say, tank water and put it in the back of the filter to get it running again, which can be a problem if you're at work, for example, and the power goes out and you don't know it because everything else in your house restarts except for your filter or it goes out and there's no water in the back because it's all coming out of the filter and your motor and your filter overheats before you get home. So that's another problem with them. Um, so they're great filters that, you know, they're kind of a plug and play that you just buy it, you buy the one unit, you put it on the back of your filter and you plug it up, and you may have to pour water in the back of it and it takes off running. Or some of the others you have to assemble them, The say the undergrowth filter, you have to put them in before you put your substrate in and all that. You don't have to have any extra components with this. Whereas like the sponge filter, you also have an air pump, airline tubing, 
maybe an air stone this whatever comes in the box that's what you need they make hang on the back filters for tanks ranging from about I would say maybe five gallons you might can find one that would do smaller all the way up to probably 70 gallons but if you wanted to filter a tank larger than that you can add multiple hang on the back filters if that's the method that you wanted to run but that's a brief look at the hang on the back filters if you have questions comments or anything about uh, the hang on the back filters or whole filtration series leave them in the comments section down below and I guess till next time rate comment subscribe hit your notifications little bell and tell your neighbor all that good stuff and we'll we'll see you next time